Yay Networks. 13 has been my lucky number for a while. Like, it's always a sign of good things to come for me. This is 13, a Taylor Swift fan podcast. Breaking down every song, every Easter egg, every era, and every theory. Hosted by the biggest Swifties. Nick Adams, Anna Zabo, Amy Nichols, and Lacey G. Welcome to 13, a Taylor Swift fan podcast. My name's Nick Adams. I'm Anna. Amy. And I'm Lacey G. And today we're going to try something that uh, could be great. Could be a total fail. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. It'll, it's not going to be a fail. Okay, we well, we might mean, be wrong. We might be wrong. Maybe fail is not the right word. We might just be wrong with Which our predictions. would be the first time that we are ever <laughs> wrong about something. I know. On so this podcast. kind of exciting. A first. <laughs> a lot on. So the Tortured Poets Department is going to be coming out very soon. <laughs> and we always like to, right when the album comes out, we like to do our just initial rankings. Like just first thoughts. What? How are we ranking this album? We do our top five. So we're going to do the same thing with the songs, even though we haven't heard them yet. We're just going on the title alone. Maybe some people are going on the track number. Mm-hmm. Maybe you think, ooh, I always love the track fives, so that's going to be on here, whatever it is. And then after it's released, we can go back and look at <laughs> and say, did we make the right choice on this or not? Because I want to say during Midnight's, I picked Maroon pretty high, and that's still very high on my favorites on Maroon. Yeah, good job. Yeah, that was good. Mm-hmm. I think... I think I had said Midnight Rain, which did hold top spot for a while mm-hmm. until I got Dear Reader. Yeah. So should we go through what the songs are before we just start throwing out all these uh, song titles for yeah. everybody? Nick, I do yeah. want to say um, one of our sweet listeners did suggest that we do this oh, cool. on Google Voicemail. Um, I played it many episodes back, and I apologize. I can't remember the name, but... Um, a sweet listener did suggest that we do this, and apparently a lot of people are doing it on Pinterest. A lot of Swifties are doing it. Like, this is, we're trendy, is yeah. what I'm trying to say. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a fun idea. Yeah. It's a fun idea. I also think it'd be fun if, after we do our rankings, since we're going to get the album in just a few days, I think we should pose questions for our, like, future selves. You know what I mean? <gasps> like, questions about the album that we'll be able to answer in a few days. Okay. Great idea. Does that make sense if you yeah. want to start thinking yeah. about it? Yeah, I got okay. one. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. Already. Maybe. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> All right. So here, here's the track list for the Tortured Poets Department. Track one, Fortnite featuring Post Malone, which is interesting to have a feature be the first track. Has she ever done that before? I don't think so. I don't know. I'll have to go back and look. Of. And then I did see someone who said uh, that she is officially entering into her gamer era <laughs> oh Fortnite. Yeah. yeah but we all know lacy Fortnite means two weeks two weeks there you go way to go and then track number two is the tortured poets department number three is my boy only breaks his favorite toys and we have down bad so long london huh wonder <laughs> what could that be about we have but daddy i love him fresh out the slammer can that be a rap song, please? Like, <laughs> I just feel like there's a lot of angst in that one. Florida! With three <laughs> exclamation points featuring Florence and the Machine. Guilty as Sin. Track number 10 is Who's Afraid of Little Old Me? Track 11 is I Can Fix Him. No, really, I can. Track 12 is L-O-M-L, which I'm assuming means a love of my life. I don't but know. Loss of my life? Could be. Loss of my love? Mm-hmm. Loser oh. of my life? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Lobster of my <gasps> life. That's it. That's it. We found the song. Love of my lobsters. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Could you imagine? Okay. Track number 13, I Can Do It With a Broken Heart. Track number 14, The Smallest Man Who Ever Lived. Wow. Yeah. I would not want that song to be about me. Mm-mm. Number 15, The Alchemy. And the final track on the original album is Clara Bow. That's number 16. Then you have several different editions. So on the manuscript edition, she has the manuscript as a bonus song. On the Bolter edition, the bonus song is the Bolter. <laughs> on the Albatross edition, everybody say it with me, the bonus song is the, the Albatross. Albatross. And then on the Black Dog edition, you have the Black Dog. The Black Dog. Mm-hmm. So um, who wants to start with their number five? I will. Do we, are we doing like fives around, fours around? Okay. Yeah. Like we, you, like we do, do our yeah, usual rankings. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So for me, my fifth favorite song on the <laughs> Tortured Poets Department is going to be I Can Fix Him. No, really, I can. 
boy, that's going to be in like the denial Apple Music playlist <laughs> the second it's released, right? So that's my number five. Okay. That's track 11. Okay. Uh, All right. Oh, yeah. We usually go this way. Mm, yes. You, you go. go. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. We um, usually go that way. Like, okay, you. Nick. For number five, it was too hard for me to choose. I have two runners. Uh, well, I have one and one runner up. Um, I can fix them. No, really, I can. That had to make my list. Also, look at my shirt that I got from Taylor Fest that All says, right. I can fix them. No, really, I can. It's funny wearing this shirt or I put something up on Instagram in this shirt and the non-Swifties that would comment on it and be like, oh, but you can't. Did it? And I'm like, okay, what? first off, it's a, it's a Taylor Swift shirt. You don't understand. And I know this is tongue in cheek, but like, it's just the, the naysaying boys. That's like, oh, but you can't fix anybody. Obviously I can't fix anybody. I can't even fix myself, but thanks sir for commenting that. Just send them, um, send them the song when it comes out. Yeah. Make sure we get the streams. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I did have that tied with, Who's afraid of little me? Because I just think that song is going to have a lot of power in it, that it's going to be taunting, that it's going to be, oh, you don't think I can do it? Watch this. So I'm very excited for both of those. All right. Amy, track five yeah. for you? Well, or Lacey cheated, ranking? and I also cheated, but next level. Honorable mentions? Should I, <laughs> should I save with her like, later? Oh, okay, should I add honorable mentions? <laughs> like 15 no, honorable mentions? No. How many points are we going to add to this? Huh? Oh, <laughs> fine, fine. I won't talk about it right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> we can do honorable mentions when we actually listen to the songs. How about okay. that? Amy, How about that? Amy. I don't. I don't care what you do. <laughs> I, You've already I have, stated your opinion. I don't care what. No, you do. I want to know what your honorable mentions okay, are. Okay, it was. I can. I can fix them really. Um, L O M L, which my first question you said why? Why is it all lowercase? Ooh, mm. it's the only one. And then my <gasps> fifth is Claire Bow, which I'm getting like last great American Dynasty vibes. Ah, from okay. That. I'm very you know, interested. like a history history book lesson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are the three honorable mentions. No, no, no. Sorry, Claire Bow was my fifth. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, at number five, I also have Claribo. I think um, we're going to learn a lot about Claribo. And I'm also very interested in the fact that this is the last song on the standard edition that we know of so mm -hmm. far. Um, so I'm just, I, 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 there has to be a reason as to why it's the last track. And so that's why I have it on my, in my top five. I'm like Amy. It's going to be a history lesson. I didn't know who Claribo was until... Um, her name was on this track list, and now I know so much about her, and I'm interested in learning, learning more. I can see how Taylor would feel the parallels between her and um, Clara Bow, and it's gonna be it's gonna be really interesting. Yeah, I'm excited. So for moi, my <laughs> fourth favorite track on the Tortured Poets Department is "Who's Afraid of Little Old Me." To me, Lacey, I think you said it right. It's like a taunting. It's like t it's like a challenge. Little old me, mm -hmm. you're yeah. afraid of little old me, and it's almost belittling. I'm assuming it's a man she's speaking to. It's giving the man vibes. Yeah. Like who's afraid of just little old me? Yeah. What can I do? I'll show you what I can do. Here you go. <laughs> yeah. Break your heart. There's yeah. also thoughts that that can be referencing uh, or have references to um, Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton, and they did a movie. Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Oh, yeah. Or something. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of ties to that. Nikki King talks about it a lot on TikTok. So go check out what she's saying, what a lot of people are saying. But, yeah, I think that's going to be powerful for sure. Lacey, what's your fourth favorite? So for number four, I'm picking the manuscript. Mm -hmm. I think there's going to be... I mean, that's the whole theme that she's going with, with the Tortured Poets Department. I wonder what the manuscript is going to be about. I have absolutely no idea. I did read um, someone called What's That Cute Thing on Reddit was theorizing the manuscript. What if this is the man you script? Like just broken down since theorizing this is a lot about relationships, failing a relationship, I can fix them. No, really, I can if this was the man you script. And I just thought that was an interesting take. Like the man you create? Yeah. The man you... Yeah, the, the man you try... Like if you just break that word down and make it separately, I don't know that I 
think that. Who knows, yeah. though? But I do think there's going to be some significant tie-in since that's the um, whole theme of the Tortured Poets getting out their manuscript. Mm-hmm. All right. My number four, I have My Boy Only Breaks His Favorite Toys. And I think what really is drawing me in on that is the possession. My boy. not I don't know. There's just something about it. It's like, okay, this is this is going to be a little painful. And I love the painful song. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's giving. This is why we can't have nice things. Mm-hmm. My boy only breaks his toys. Well, mm-hmm. shiny, shiny toys. You know that I bought it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 All right, Anna. Fourth favorite. For number four, I have guilty as sin question mark. I'm intrigued by the question mark. And we have heard her say Guilty as Sin before in um, Carolina. So even though, like, we haven't heard the song yet, in my head I read it as Guilty as Sin. Na, 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 na. But um, I'm really interested. I'm, I'm very, very, very intrigued by the fact that there's a question mark in this. Guilty mm-hmm. as Sin? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Guilty as Sin? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on to our third favorite tracks on the Torture Poets Department. Without hearing it at all. Uh, for me, number three is going to be LOML. And just a second ago, y'all were talking about LOML and what does it mean. May, what I'm thinking is maybe it was sent in a text message that's very texty, yeah. like LOL, uh, whatever else people abbreviate into just <laughs> little letters. <laughs> LOL. I'm, laugh, I'm thinking of Phil Dunphy right now. LOL. Mm-hmm. Laugh out loud. Uh-huh. WTF. Why the face? <laughs> it makes me think um, this conversation that maybe you don't use those so much. Nick. I don't. I don't yeah. really well, use what, the abbreviated what's things. What's the last one you think you used probably, in your text? Probably LOL, which okay. I was for a long time staunchly against LOL. I was too. And the same thing with sending emojis, but now that's just what you got to do. Yeah. Well, well, I, I oh, spell it out. Oh. Laugh out loud. Laugh out loud. I'm not going to do LOL. You also use Android, so I don't know. I don't know. The hate. I don't know. The smaller community in the Swifty community is the haters of the Androids in the Swifty community. Android Swifties. Need to start a movement, Amy. Android Swifties. Android Swifties. One of my favorite things that Amy ever did was at one point she had to issue an apology for something that she said on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. And so she photoshopped the iPhone notes app for her apology for us to post on Instagram. And it was just so funny to me, the fact that she photoshopped it to look like it was on the iPhone notes app. That's one of my favorite things you've ever done. (laughs) But LOML. LOML. Typically, it does stand for love of my life, life. right? But I feel like like it won't. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. All right, Lacey, what you got for your third favorite? Third favorite, alchemy. Um, I've been... Reading a lot into this, alchemy refers to uh, the process of turning something into gold. Gold Rush from Evermore is about how everybody wants Joe. People flock to glimpse him and graze him as if he was precious gold. You've got champagne problems based off a fictional story. I, there's just there's going to be a lot there. Touching the Midas touch, Chevy door, painting everything gold, and now it's not gold anymore. It was that cheap gold that has rusted and changed colors. And um, now alchemy is going to become this tragic metaphor of that. And I'm just really interested about her tie-in, about how her mind works just in general, because we know how creative she is. So to be able to take back the color gold and change it, and that's what I think she's going to be doing in alchemy. I also have number three as the alchemy. Um, I'm down for the tragedy mm-hmm. metaphor. Yeah. So I'm especially, excited. Especially when we've seen it across multiple albums. Mm-hmm. That's going to. And a little witchy, you know, a little willow, yeah. like, I don't know, manipulating the mm-hmm. elements kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 Um, for number three, I have So Long London. I mean, it's track five. Yeah. Do I dare say more? <laughs> yeah. So. It's a podcast. I'd like you to say a little more. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so historically, track five on a Taylor Swift album tends to be the more, the most emotional, emotionally driven song. And the fact that it's just flat out so long London, mm-hmm. like that is just, that's, that's a, that's a shot in the heart. That's a, that's a blatant dig. So I'm, um, I'm really scared to hear it, but I'm really excited to hear it. And yeah, so I have So Long London. I couldn't not have track five in my predictions for my top five, but there's two other song titles that kind of got my attention a little bit more. Um, 
also, I'm going to London this summer, and so I already plan to use So Long London lyrics in my Instagram. Can't wait. <laughs> I like them. <laughs> Thanks, Amy. <laughs> From her Android phone. <laughs> <laughs> they have Instagram apps on Android? They do. Guys, leave Amy alone. Why are y'all picking on her? <laughs> All right, so moving on to our second favorite track on the Torture Post Department, But Daddy, I Love Him. It's such a, no matter how old you are, your dad's going to try and take care of you. And your dad's going to say, like, Taylor, this isn't right. This isn't working. Protect yourself. Uh, but Daddy, I love him. And it's just like, it hurts as a dad. It's just like, I know I'm going to hear that at some point one Aww. day. And it's just like, oh, my gosh, I feel like this song is already going to crush me. And it also brings me back to, like, all too well 10-minute version, how her dad plays a role in that story of like the You're boyfriend is trying to win over the dad and being sweet to the dad. And then your dad tells you like, it's supposed to be fun turning 21. Like don't look at the door cause he's not there. And it's like, Oh my gosh, this yeah. is going to hurt me. Yeah. I think it's going to be rough. Aww. All right. Lacey, mm -hmm. second favorite. My second favorite, simple, but crushing. Um, I can do it with a broken heart. Mm -hmm. Just knowing that, she powered through, that she was on the heiress tour, that she was doing things that we had no idea about and putting on this brave face and how much that sucks to have to do it. And she's out in public taking care of business and performing and just putting out all of her emotions. She can do it with a broken heart. She has shown us time and time again. But I'm excited to hear that song. Uh, I also have But Daddy, I Love Him as my number two for the same reasons, mm -hmm. Nick. Mm, it's going to be sad. It's going to hurt it's so good. <laughs> 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 All right, Anna, second favorite? For number, my second favorite, I'm predicting um, The Black Dog. This is one of the bonus uh, tracks on the vi on the different editions of it. I, pay, I picked this because, A, it's my favorite cover of all of the four variants. It's the one where she's kind of like... She, it looks like she's taking her own pulse, and it almost looks like her body's, like, in the shape of a heart. Um, it just immediately, immediately, immediately became my favorite cover. I just loved it so much. And also the black dog, I have learned, is a metaphor for depression. Um, and also the black dog, I believe, is, like, a pub in London or something. So I think there's just going to be a lot of layers to this one. And the fact that it's a bonus track, I've never met a bonus track that I didn't like. True. So I think there's going to be there's gonna be something about that one that's going to – resonate with me I is mean, that the pub where she th allegedly threw up outside i don't know okay i would have to fact check that also uh is that your favorite cover the one of taylor swift or the one of you <laughs> creating it because uh, that's of, a pretty of, good uh, cover definitely of taylor swift because i look absolutely ridiculous <laughs> i we all you, do we Except all do nick. we all do but lacy <laughs> yeah nick lacy and i used um a wig in our photos, which I think adds an element of uh, unseriousness. Um, but yeah, that was just my favorite. As soon as I saw that one, I like ordered like every version of it that I could. Cause I was just like, this is the most insane cover I've ever seen. Wait, like cassette tape? I didn't do vinyl, the cassette. I did vinyl and CD. CD. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't trying to call you out. Should have done like, the cassette. I didn't know if I understood you correctly. I will. I will admit, I do get every version of everything that she ever puts out, but I've never ordered the cassettes. It's okay. I'm realistic. What's, I, <laughs> what's the point? I don't know. I don't get collector. It. collector. I guess. Yeah. I guess. It's a collector. What? It's a collector. I think I said item. that weird. Collector. What? Yeah, I don't know what I said, but it, when I said it, I was like, that doesn't sound right. Mm. I'm not gonna say it again. Okay. <laughs> Is it the th thesaurus? <laughs> Maybe <laughs> thesaurus. The next one. <laughs> we'll fix it in post. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, guys, maybe the black dog is Taylor finally having a Harry Potter song and she's singing about Sirius Black. Maybe. Mm. Anybody? Maybe. Sorry, I had to throw. I know we had moved past the jokes. No. I had to throw that in no, there but for we, our but we've, Harry um, Potter Swifties. We've connected other songs to I, I Harry Potter I think we're finally going to get yeah. that Harry Potter song. So, which is also shocking because we know Taylor is a cat person. Very true. Mm -hmm. Well, Hermione has a cat. <laughs> I'm currently reading Harry Potter oh. books with, with my son. <laughs> so like that's our on? nightly thing. Right now we're on the Chamber of Secrets. Oh, okay. okay. We have gotten into the chamber. So he oh, okay. I don't want to spoil it, but he's in the chamber and <laughs> he's, he's finding there? out the heir of Slytherin. So it's oh. it's pretty wild. What house are you? I mean, everyone's gonna say they want to be a Gryffindor. I would love to be a Gryffindor. 
But oh, you've never taken the test? I mean, I think I did, and I didn't like what it said. <laughs> I don't but remember. I like. I don't want to. I don't want to be a Ravenclaw. Sorry, I said it. <laughs> I don't want to be a Ravenclaw. I want to be a Gryffindor. So you, that's what I am. Oh, because I took the test, and I'm a Hufflepuff, mm -hmm. and I'm proud of it. It's cool. It's cool. Congratulations. <laughs> Number one. So sassy. You're the one that wanted to talk about Harry Potter. I don't know what's up. Okay. My favorite song without hearing the tortured poets department is I Can Do It With a Broken Heart. It's definitely giving me you're on your own kid vibes. Like something bad happened. I'm going to persevere. I'm moving on. I can do this. No matter what the circumstances are, I'm going to do it. So hopefully it's a song about like perseverance and believing in yourself. That's what I'm that's what I'm hoping for, like an uplifting song, even though it's kind of a sad title. That's my favorite. Lacey? Now I'm questioning if I saw something that was Photoshopped or not. I thought we were all going to have the same number one. For number one, I picked uh, track five, So Long London. Is this a nine minute and 28 I, second song? I or saw is that, that too. Okay. But I don't know that it's fact. Okay. Uh, I don't know. On I have Spotify, so I don't know if Apple Music is different, but on Spotify, it doesn't show the track length. I'm on Wikipedia, and currently that's, it says that that track is 4 minutes and 22 seconds. Dang it. Okay. I, I saw the same thing, though. The Lisa. longest I've... being Who's Afraid of Little Old Me at 5 minutes and 34 seconds. So my basis is also on that, so okay. I'm with you. <laughs> so I've seen on TikTok that So Long London is 9 minutes, 28 seconds. We're getting another 10-minute version. I don't know if this is true. There's a lot of Photoshop stuff going around. I don't know that anything's been confirmed, but... Assuming that it is 928, that's also her and Joe's anniversary. Oh, she, shit. She changed <laughs> oh, <wow. a> lyric <laughs> one time to uh, 928. I can't remember the song, but she covered like... September. Thank you. Yeah, she covered that and changed the date to 928. That is um, her and Joe's anniversary. She loves numbers. She loves number numerology. She does things for a reason and if that is just one more shot at this then that's incredible um also I think it's going to be you're losing me part two I think it's going to be just a long all too well 10 minute version this is what I wanted to say and it's enough great things to put in a 10 minute song because it's so unpopular to have that length yeah so that's my number one. Um, I do want to say one more. Um, what if this is a picture to burn or better than revenge track? If it is just a... Hi. Mm. Uh, yeah. Uh, if it's not just the sad, you're losing me sister song. If it is more of a triumphant yeah, so picture. Well. Yeah. A picture to burn. I'm out, bitch. <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll see. We, we have... Another couple days. Amy, favorite song? Number one, copy, pay, So Long London. Mm. Um, I, you know, saw the same thing. So I'm wondering, was this recorded the same way as the original All Too Well 10-minute version? Like a runoff? That, that's the Ooh. question I have. Like, was it just something she was just ranting on and on in the studio and it just became something? Or was this meticulous and planning and writing it out, poetry? And um, I don't know. So that's my question. Do you think her. that if it's not true if it's actually like four minutes or something do you think you're going to be disappointed no it's five it's the fifth track i don't think you can go wrong with that yeah it's still going to be great they're all going to be great <laughs> we could be days away from hearing our new favorite album mm -hmm. which is insane to think about out of all of her music we love it all and we're still going to have more music more songs to love more things to dissect more things to get all in the feels about I have, um, Anna still has to do hers, but I have some uh, friendship bracelets that I've seen people making in preparation oh, for this nice. album. Yeah. Great. Um, for me, the song on the Torture Post Department that I'm predicting will be my favorite without hearing it is I Can Do It With A Broken Heart. Also, I think... I think it's, I think the title is just, that was like, that was the first title that I saw that immediately was like, this is going to be a heartbreaking album. And I think it's also so far one that we have seen happen like in the heiress tour we've seen her perform love songs as she's going through a breakup we've seen her um 
you know, basically do it, do it with a broken heart. Put on an amazing show, a show with a broken heart and get through it and write songs and everything. So I think, uh, I, I just think, I don't know, that title is just so, I don't know. It's also track 13. So yeah, um, that's really special. Yeah. So I just, I'm just predicting that that'll be, um, that'll be my favorite. And it's crazy because like, it's like, I do feel inclined to want to, you know, as soon as we get the album, like listen to that one first, but it feels wrong to not listen in order. I feel you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you'll be in with order. us and we've already decided. Yeah. So, <laughs> Oh yeah. And thank you, Amy. Great segue. We are having a live listening party on our YouTube channel and you can find that YouTube channel in the description of this podcast. I hope. Mm-hmm. Hopefully. Yes. Yes, it is there. And um, 13podcast.net. And the 13podcast.net is there where you can find all the information for everything that we're doing. But yeah, we're going to have a live listening party online on our YouTube channel the night that this comes out. So whether it's 11 o'clock on the 18th central time for you or if it's midnight Eastern time on the 19th for you, tune in. We're going to be listening to every song together, talking about it and just going track by track and listening to it for the very first time. So we did this with Midnight's and it was a blast. It was so, so fun. And yeah, it's so special. It mm-hmm. Yes. A nice moment we can all share together. And that's not the only big event we're doing. A week after that, we're going to be having our own event at Grandscape in the Colony in Texas from 2 to 5 on April 27th. That's a Saturday. Come hang out with us for Swifties in the Park. All the info for tickets and things like that are in the description of our podcast as well. We would love to hang out with you. Maybe you can win some fun prizes. It's going to be a blast. We can definitely console each other after going through this heartbreak together of what's going to be the Tortured Poets Department. It's going to be a good time. It's always a good time to get together with Swifties and celebrate and talk and theorize and it's just it, playing this new album on repeat. It's going to be a super good time. So we would love to see you all there. Now, Anna, you said we need to ask questions to our future self. Yes. Right? If we have any, like pose a question right now that we can basically listen back and answer in just a few days. Like, for example, I want to know to our future selves, what was the most shocking part of the Tortured Poets Department? That's like, you know, like, I feel like we have a lot of suspicions and expectations, but what was the most shocking part? Like for Midnight's, I would say the most shocking thing was hitting play on Midnight Rain, Yeah, you know? Mm-hmm. So I kind of want to know, like, what is going to be the most shocking part of the Tortured Post Department? That's a good question. Um, okay, I'll go along the same lines and just say, what is your favorite, I don't want to say new word, but what is your favorite unique word Ooh, yeah. that Taylor threw into the Tortured Poets? Because we're obviously getting poetry vibes. So we're thinking Taylor is really going to lean into using a well-rounded vocabulary. (laughs) And so maybe like, what word did you have to look up? Uh, That's my question. What word did you have to look up? Oh, great question. That was used in the tortured poets department. Great question. Okay. Yes. Okay. For me, I want to know, um, whenever you're listening to new music, it's going to take us a minute, you know, like you hear it for the first time, but then you have to go back and re-listen to it. And so which one after a couple days really grew that maybe I didn't understand Mm -hmm. in the height of our excitement and listening for the very first time? Um, Because there's a lot going on whenever you're listening to a song for the first Mm -hmm. time. We have the lyrics up, but I mean, you don't necessarily know or catch everything. Yeah. So uh, we normally like to take a couple of days and come back and um, rank them. So I want to know which ones did I not get at first? <laughs> did mm-hmm. we not understand that grew after a couple of days? Also, how do we all feel now that we know she used lobster in her lyrics? <laughs> I want to know that. Mm-hmm. Good I, questions. I, I already asked my questions. What was it? Uh, it, why was L O M L lowercase? Uh. I don't know that. I mean, that's just. I don't know if that's gonna be answered though. Could be. I mean, we'll probably get some more insight. Yeah. And um, is, is it a runoff? Is it gonna be the nine twenty eight minute for so long, London? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's cool. All. Well, awesome. So join us at our listening party. It's gonna be a lot of fun. It is gonna be a lot of fun. I did have a couple of things. Oh, yeah. Real quick, if that's okay. Um. So. This, um, I have a couple clips from TikTok, and then we want to hear a voicemail. But 
I saw this from TikTok, like, as soon as Tortured Poets Department was announced, and I've never forgotten it. This is from 20 Cash Regular. I've never forgotten it. I've thought about it and respected it and just like randomly in my head came back and laughed at this moment ever since. In the poetic justice system, emotionally based offenses are considered especially songworthy. In New York City, the dedicated writers who lyricize these tragedies are part of an elite squad known as the Tortured Poets Department. These are their stories. <laughs> Dun, dun. <laughs> She's not even saying it with a straight face. I love it. That's uh, great. I people really are that. just so creative, and that has made me giggle. It's interesting that none of us ranked the Tortured Poets Department, like the title track. The title track? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. I just realized that. Yeah. It's an honorable, ben honorable mention for yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> um, along the same lines of people just being funny and silly, Cha Cha Makes Art came up with this nickname for Tortured Poets Department. Sweet Prince, has anybody already come up with the idea of calling the Tortured Poets Department the Topo Depot? Because that's what I'm calling it. <laughs> the, the Topo, Topo Depot. Depot. <laughs> I love that. Which is kind of <laughs> Topo Chico. Yeah, too. that could be one of the yeah. drinks we have during our live listening. Oh, that's, that's a, that's Topo a great Depots. idea. Yeah. It's some Topo Depot. <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, some um, friendship bracelets that I saw people were making in preparation for the Tortured Poets Department were all just ready to be tortured. We think this is going to be just a roller coaster of emotions and new words. Um, I saw someone make a friendship bracelet that says, All too well, Butrin. <laughs> okay, only me. Never I mind. I thought I, that was funny. That a, uh, depression, well, Butrin, yeah. Is yeah. that a depression drug? Yeah. yeah. Oof. It's oh, fun. It's Nick's funny. happy. Look it's at funny. Nick. He didn't even know that's a depression mm, pill. Know. Okay, well then you're not going to get this one either. Um, champagne Prozac. <laughs> I've heard of it. Don't know what it's used for. It's depression. Okay. It right. was just funny. Okay, never mind. Um, <laughs> you don't, get, don't. You don't get to tell me what's funny. I'm not. I'm, I, I didn't say anything until you brought it up. I thought it was funny. Okay, but, it, is. Uh, it hits different in different it is. groups. <laughs> Sorry. Man, go take some well butrin. Calm down. <laughs> Don't ever tell anybody to calm down, Nicholas. Okay. okay so from our <laughs> Google voicemail. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah. <dookie. laughs> um, Sarah from Florida is very excited for the Tortured Poets Department, and she's been putting up with us for a very long time. <laughs> Hi, 13. It's Taylor Swift Fan Podcast. My name is Sarah. I'm a Swiftie that lives in Central Florida. And I just wanted to tell you guys how much I love the podcast. Like, literally, I love listening every single week. I've been listening since, like, 2021. I started listening, like, right after you guys started. And you guys are just so awesome. I love how you guys continue to bring Taylor's words to life. I'm so excited for the Tortured Poets Department. I am very excited for the song Florida with three exclamation points because I went to Tampa night two. I got your on your own kid and the great war when I was pulling up to the stadium. I actually heard her sound checking the great war and I was freaking out in my car. My best friend was like, what is going on? And I was like, she's sound checking the great war. It was just an amazing night. And especially after the announcement of her and Joe breaking up, Taylor literally performed so well. She did amazing. Like I, you never would have thought like she was completely, it, she just seemed unfazed. I'm, I'm just so proud of Taylor. Everything that she's done in the last year with, um, how successful Midnight was announcing Speak Now and releasing her version, 1989 Taylor's version, and announcing this new album. I just am so proud to be a Swifty, and I love you guys. I hope you guys are all doing well, and I can't wait to listen to the live stream with you guys of the Tortured Post Department. I hope you guys have a great day. Oh, thank you, Sarah. Yay, I'm so thank excited. You. Ooh, man, what a night to be at. Yeah. Wow. And it's just so fun hearing from people who are just as excited as we are, who says the same things. I mean, we're proud of each of, uh, of her and everything that she's doing. Um, so, I mean, Sarah sounds like she could be right here with us mm -hmm. right now just talking. And she probably would have liked my jokes, Nicholas. <laughs> okay. It's just I, something that I saw on, on uh, I thought, TikTok. I thought it was funny. 
did I steamroll that joke? I don't remember <laughs> steamrolling that I think joke. I don't. I, think I feel like this reaction is a little hard. Like, I, just I don't know. I don't I'm gonna have it, to. I'm gonna funny. have to watch it back. <laughs> No, tagged. you just didn't understand, but that's okay. It's because <laughs> you are mentally well. Not everybody is. And I'm definitely not going to be after the tortured poets department. <laughs> Thanks for listening. The Third Team, a Taylor Swift fan podcast. Subscribe for free and leave a positive review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Google Podcasts.